microphone. Okay, the Zorn color palette, not being able to spell my friend's name right, lip smacking ASMR. My name is Eric Canetti, you're watching Redraw, and today I'm drawing the Predator. Can we take a moment to uh, be grateful that I didn't go with those initial color choices that I did in the beginning there? Jeez, that would have been a Miami Vice train wreck if I had moved forward with those. Let's talk a little bit about the uh, Zorn color palette. I'm reading this off of a, um, a Google search that I found. It's a very great resource. It's called uh, Draw Paints Academy. Anyway, there is an art, or there was an artist named uh, Anders Zorn, and he has a. Um, I don't know if it's still being disputed, but I think there's plenty of examples in his body of work that help stand up this uh, this argument that um, he would only use four colors, and the four colors are yellow ochre, uh, ivory black, uh, vermilion, and titanium white. Um, these days, uh, when it comes to traditional paint, people often um, substitute, uh, what is it, cadmium red for vermilion? Anyway, I'll link to the uh, article on drawpaintacademy.com in the description below. But what's cool, at least in regards to that palette, is that the, the color temperature um, and then obviously the intensity of color changes depending on how uh, you compose those colors next to each other just based on um, just based on four colors for me the big takeaway is that it limits the color palette enough that somehow it becomes harmonious right away so that makes things easy for my caveman brain to wrap um, uh, to wrap my mind around I want to be honest though I didn't intentionally go for these as one color palette with this image uh, it took the magic of color sliders and hue and saturation sliders in Procreate to make all of that happen. It's one of the great saving graces as I'm trying to get better at my craft and getting better at drawing and painting is that uh, Procreate is very accommodating to experimentation. Now the key is for me to retain all of that information uh, that I learned based on each piece that I do. It's rare that that happens, man. As I'm doing voiceover for these YouTube videos, I'm assembling them as I go, and it's quite obvious that I don't necessarily do one giant long voiceover, and I do short little segments. Anyway, that's not the point. The point is, whenever I am reviewing what I just recorded, there's occasions where I catch myself sort of smacking my lips. It's kind of weird, and it's kind of gross, and I don't know what's behind that, but... I want to apologize to you ahead of time. Lip smacking ASMR. So if you recall from the beginning, I was just laying down uh, large strokes of color. And sometimes that's a good exercise for me to not get hung up on the figure first and then trying to figure out what sort of color palette works thereafter um, as an exercise. Uh, like I said, it's really super liberating and fun and uh, a different change of pace for me. Um, sometimes the exercise is just to lay down large swaths of color, um, something that feels really good in theme with what the subject matter is going to be. And once I get that down into a manageable sort of composition, I draw on top of that. And from there, once I start rendering, I just color pick out of that and and um, do the mixing once I uh, once I do the color picking. So. It's pretty fun, and like I said, super liberating. I'm not hung up on trying to make everything work right away. I just do really broad, general, um, I take a really broad, general approach. This video is a little bit shorter than my target length video of 10 to 12 minutes. This one's running, and I don't know how this is possible because I, I was struggling with this painting, but this video is about eight minutes long, and it's right around now, halfway through, that I try to remind you that if you're not already subscribing to my channel to please do so by clicking that button hit that notification bell so that you are alerted to whenever i put up new work 
Um, if you're not already doing so, please follow me on my social media accounts. You can find me on both Twitter and Instagram at Eric Kennedy. In my previous videos, I had spoken about the the impact of iconic design and how it uh, leads to a legacy that the future of that particular IP keeps tapping into. And the interesting thing, as I'm sitting here rendering or watching the the video of me rendering this predator, is that uh, I don't know if in recent times, if there are designs from movies out there that you can really call iconic, right? Now, I know that some of these designs that I'm referring to as iconic are derived from previous monsters or previous whatever it may be, but I don't know if in, in recent times we have um, something as relevant as the Xenomorph from Aliens or uh, the Predator or the, the flying car from Blade Runner or something as, um, something as long-lasting as, the, the, as Godzilla, right? If you can think of one, um, please uh, comment, uh, please leave a comment below. I'd like to check those out because, again, I can't think of one. Uh, off the top of my head. Also, I just caught myself smacking my lips again. You're welcome. I want to take the opportunity to thank uh, my good friend Naomi Baker, uh, an amazing artist. Am I saying her name right? Naomi? Naomi? Forgive me. Some friend I am. Anyway, I want to thank her for setting the bar that I always strive for when it comes to my digital art. Uh, please go follow her now. I think she's on um, Twitter. She's definitely on Instagram under Naomi Full. N A I M. Oh, God, I can't spell. N A O M I F U L. There you go. Uh, she's worked for studios like um, Activision and Blur, Arena Net. I think she's just got, uh, she just finished stuff for Marvel. And most recently, she's one of the concept artists that helped out with Ghost of Tsushima. So. Thanks, Naomi. I'm sorry I butchered all of your information. <laughs> and more importantly, because I can't spell your name, I'm very, very sorry. But please go find her. She, to me, establishes the high bar of uh, what I'm striving for in my work. So thank you for uh, being that great point of reference. I owe you a ton of money because I think I'm, if not directly, definitely indirectly stealing stuff from you. Thanks, Naomi. In a piece like this, when I go straight to color, I get super nervous on whether or not I'm actually communicating the right sort of value and depth. Um, it's a lot easier for my brain to wrap around um, a value study first and then laying down color on top of that, but that, uh, that approach has a lot of different traps, not the least of which it has a tendency to make color muddy, so there's extra effort that you need to put into it in order to... Uh, uh, not hit that wall. Anyway, when I go straight to color like this, um, I'm very mindful on whether or not I'm actually communicating the appropriate volume or whether I'm letting the color, uh, the hue do, do all the heavy lifting. Um, let's say in the case of the Predator's torso here, is that really receding away from the viewer correctly or is because I'm rendering it correctly or is it because I just kind of dropped it in the shadow? Uh, I, I bumped down the saturation in his, uh, in his uh, stomach area or in his abdomen area. So those are the things I'm, I'm trying to pay attention to. A lot of things I have to negotiate because I'm not 100%. Um, or a lot of things I have to keep to be mindful about because I'm not 100% comfortable with color yet. But there you go. But give myself a good old back pad for waiting until the end to put in all of these little tiny details from the, the little skulls around his neck to the freckles and the hair follicles on his head and little whatever those little buckle things on his uh, dreadlocks. Uh, normally I would be caught up doing that right from the very beginning and I'd end up painting that out anyway. Thank you everybody for watching. I'm glad you made it to the end of this video through all of that lip smacking. Thank you so much, you guys. I really do appreciate your support and viewership. These uh, time lapses have been uh, a ton of fun to do, and I am so very glad that you're here to watch along.